Hi, my future mathematicians. I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at limits of rational functions, in particular, how we can prove a limit using a delta epsilon argument. So um, this was actually a question from a viewer. Thank you, Krasimir T. Um, and so I started looking around to see, you know, what would be some good tips, and I found an excellent website. Um, there's a Dr. Will Johnson, who, who graduated from Berkeley, who had posted um, a website with some tips on how to determine what delta to use, because that's really the key to a delta epsilon proof. You assume that there's some epsilon, we don't know what it is, and then we say for that epsilon, we prove that there's a delta that will make the definition of a limit work. So um, the website is math.berkeley.edu um, and it's linked below the video. Let's take a look at what he talks about in his epsilonics PDF that he has posted there. All right, so it says, um, if f of x is either a polynomial function or a nice enough rational function, nice enough that you can, if limit as x approaches a of the function is what you're talking about, you can plug in a to the function to find the limit, then an approach to finding your delta is to actually find a bound on the absolute value of the difference quotient. So here's what I mean. We want to find some constant c that guarantees that the absolute value of f of x minus f of a over x minus a is always less than or equal to c. And if you can do that, you can always choose delta to be equal to epsilon over c. And he goes into some details why, but I'm gonna walk through it with you because when you do the proof, you're gonna kind of imitate these steps. Okay, so first of all, we're talking about the limit as x approaches a of some function f of x being equal to L. And we're assuming that you can find L by plugging a into f. And so let's talk about the definition of a limit as x approaches a of f of x. What that notation here is really telling you is that if there's, if anybody gave you any number epsilon greater than zero, that there would exist a delta greater than zero so that if x is within delta units of a, that means that f of x is within epsilon units of the limit L. Now, the technique that Dr. Johnson mentions in his tips sheet is if you can get f of x minus f of a over x minus a, the absolute value of that, to be less than or equal to some particular constant c, if you can find that number c, and so that that value, that expression is bounded by c, then it's safe to choose delta to be epsilon divided by c. So let's talk about why. So first of all, the left side of this implication is going to uh, be assumed, right? If that happens, then the other part has to happen. So we're assuming that the absolute value of x minus a is going to be less than delta. Okay, so what does that tell us? We want to work our way over to the right side now. So we want to establish that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So let's work our way up to that. What do we know about f of x minus l? Well, the absolute value of f of x minus l, we said we could also write as absolute value of f of x minus f of a. We want to somehow incorporate the difference quotient's absolute value being less than this number c. And so I'm going to say, well, this would be equal to the absolute value of f of x minus f of a over the absolute value of x minus a times the absolute value of x minus a. So I'm both simultaneously multiplying and dividing by x minus a. And again, the reason why that's helpful is because we know this quantity is bounded by c. We also know that this quantity was assumed to be less than delta. So that means that this whole expression is less than or equal to delta times c. But since we chose delta to be equal to epsilon over c, that means that we can replace delta with epsilon over c and we just get epsilon. 
So we have proven that f of x minus l would have to be less than epsilon, here's the less than, in that case. So we're going to now practice on a particular example using this procedure of finding delta and then writing out the delta epsilon proof for the limit of a rational function. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to watch part two where we look at that specific example. To view part two, Either follow the link on the screen or look for the link in the comments below.